What up, what up, and greetings. I'm back again with the Rogue Review, this time from Rusticons Rumble. They're getting some weapon synergy stuff alongside uh, with stuff that complements Battlecries and Death Rattles, as well as a whole bunch of new pirates to help build this archetype alongside with the neutral additions that they're introducing. Their Shark Legendary is one that it's truly unique, actually. I would rate it alongside Cyril and Charizin as the ones that are truly roguish, and the mechanic is really, really cool. Without further ado, let's get straight into the new cards. First card on our list is a spell for 2 mana stolen steel. Discover a weapon from another class. This card is just too slow and the range of weapon in standards is too high. You can get choice of a dragon soul, school of manari and a gauntlet and you just wasted 2 mana and maybe you can trigger dragon soul once until the end of the game but it's pretty much useless weapons. Because of that it's just not good enough. There was a similar card in Monsters Hunt called Tools of Trade which allowed you to discover and equip a weapon for 2. Now that was OP especially since the weapons were all usable and quite strong. Maybe if this card did that and it was like 3 or 4 it would be a bit too strong but at least it would be usable uh, as it stands now however it's just bad. Next card is also a spell called Walk the Plank, 4 mana, destroyed an undamaged minion. Similar to Shadow Strike and a backstab with the prerequisite that the minion cannot be damaged beforehand. I think that this card is actually going to find its way into rogue decks, especially after Vilespine rotates out of standard and Odd Rogue falls out of favor a little bit. It's a lot better than Assassinate at 4 mana and usually you want to deal with the minion straight away, meaning that it won't be damaged anyway. Unless it's a damaged Stegodon, in which case you're screwed. Next one is a 1 mana weapon called Serrated Tooth. Death Rattle, give your minions rush. Uh, 1 mana, 1 free weapon. It's just meh, this weapon is just meh. You can't really use it in Odd Rogue because your bloody daggers are better at hitting face than that. You don't care about rush in Odd Rogue anyway because you care about face damage and this doesn't provide enough of it <clears throat> for one mana. You can play Firefly, Salty Devkand or Argent Squire, they're all better than this. It's quite rubbish to be honest. Next one is the first minion called Gurubashi Hypemon. For 7 mana 5, 7 discover a copy of a battle crime minion it costs 1. Uh, this effect is completely nuts. I mean, the card is very costly and you're sort of prepaying for having a cheaper battle cry minion with your stats. But there's so many good battle cries on expensive cards, even in standard right now. You've got things like Giggling Inventor, you can play for one mana, so for eight you can play this and a Giggling Inventor. One mana Azalino, so you can replenish your entire hand, one mana Deathwing if you're in that situation. I think this card is potentially playable. I mean, it's definitely bonkers in Arena, but it might be just a bit too expensive and slow to be played in Standard. Next one is Raiding Party. Free mana, draw two pirates from your deck, combo draw a weapon. So this card is completely dependent on how good, if at all, pirates are going to be. And is the same amount of mana as Arcane Intellect with the added combo effect, which I would imagine you would play a Shadow Blade for to fetch that weapon from the current roster of cards. In a similar way to Divine Favor or Sense Demons, it can come to the point in the game where it's just a dead card and it's not good as Divine Favor or Myra's Unstable Element. Myra's probably better. So I think Myra's gonna be played even in Pirates decks over this card just to replenish your hand from nothing. Nada. Next card is a spell called Cannon Barrage. Six mana, deal three damage to a random enemy. Repeat for each of your pirates. Again, it's really difficult to assess this card without knowing exactly how pirates are going to be good or if they're going to be good at all. Uh, let's say on average you have three pirates, so that's similar effect to greater arcane missiles. Uh, but it's a mana cheaper and you're able to do more damage potentially, or you can do less damage than arcane missiles. I think it's alright, it probably won't make it into aggressive decks as it's just too costly on how random can be the outcome and what you actually remove with the spell. So meh, it's okay I guess. Next one is Bloodsail Howler, 2 mana 1 1 rush battle cry gain plus 1 plus 1 for each other pirate you control. Uh, this is a weird one because by itself it's pretty strong I think because of just the 2 mana and you know, it can really snowball. It can rush, so it can answer an enemy minion somehow, like the Worgen, which is free mana, right? For warriors. So you're paying two mana for usually at least a free free, and it can be potentially more. And even though it's a really solid card, it's kind of. 
de-synergizes with the rogue legendary that they got for pirates so i wouldn't say that you would be playing both of them in the same deck and maybe if i would be choosing to play this card or or two copies of this card or the rogue legendary i would probably be playing two copies of this card over that one yeah let's see how pirates are good or not yar and going into the legendary it's captain hook tusk eight mana six free battle cry summon three pirates from your deck give them rush I mean, obviously, stats on this are horrible, but in the end, it won't matter if you summon some beefy guys with it. I see two main problems with this card is that you can't really rely on playing just big pirates. It's very slow, and this card is very slow. At that point, you might not even have any pirates or enough pirates to summon free from your deck because you might have played majority of them. Uh, the second problem is kind of entwined into this one, that the most powerful pirates or the mu most useful pirates right now and in the past were the cheaper pirates which you kind of want to summon higher cost pirates or ones with more stats with this minion since you're already paying eight mana for it mm, so don't just play big pirates you'll get crushed maybe play this card with big and smaller pirates or just play smaller pirates without this card but don't just play big pirates just just a little advice getting into the last two cards first one is the spirit card spirit of the shark four mana card Still for one turn, your battle cries and combos trigger twice. So this card is also super, super slow. Uh, you can get a massive hook tusk next turn and summon six pirates. But they got rush, no charge. So the only thing that you can really do is establish a board for the turn later. Another card that's quite disgusting with this is actually Tess. But I think that I can see most potential uses with good old plain cold bloods and evacerates. Because if you got if you go Valera in play and then you play this, then you can play Cold Blood for 16 attack, right? I mean, if you've got another card to play to combo it with, you play the combo instead of four, it gives eight, and then you play it with the um, Valera Hero Power for another eight, dealing 16 with just one card, which is pretty disgusting to be honest. But I wouldn't be too awful for this card. Uh, or the Shark Legendary that is pairing up with it, and that's the last card on our list: Growl the Shark. So like I said, the effect is super, super unique. Unfortunately, the card is not that strong in my mind. It's a five mana, two, two battle cry, eat a minion in your deck and gain its stats. Death Rattle, return it to your hand. I'm not 100% sure about this, but does this mean from the wording, it would assume that the card disappears from your deck? Uh, or do you eat like a copy from your deck and the original minion stays in your deck? Because if it stays in your deck, it's actually a lot better than if you remove it from your deck. Because if you remove it from your deck, it's an important minion and then this gets silenced. You're screwed even more than, you know, if it gets silenced normally. Because I guess it normally gets like 4-4 four, four worth of stats so for 5 mana, right? Uh, you get a 6-6, six, six, which is good. And then you get a card from it, which is really, really good. But then if it gets silenced, it's just pathetic. And I'm looking forward to this card in wild because there's quite a lot of really really cool combos that you can get with it but in standard i don't think that it will see any major play so that's it for rogues let me know what you think about new cards in the comment section below guys it's been my pleasure please hit a thumbs up on this video if you enjoyed it and i'll see you at the next one bye and take care